Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to, to today's HLAA Showcase webinar, Introductions to Implantable Solutions and the Nucleus 8 Sound Processor with Colleen Kinsella. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Melissa Cruz, and I will be your host today. I'm going to start off by giving you some tech tips. Um, to see captions on this webinar, you'll need to click the CC icon and click on show subtitles. You can change the font size in the subtitle setting. The chat feature will be open um, for technical issues and panelists only today. We'd like participants to please use the Q&A icon to ask questions. We'll be using this to facilitate questions and answers both during the presentation and afterwards. To view the full to view the full transcript in a separate window, open a new window and paste the stream text link into your browser. Um, Tim is going to be putting that into the chat feature so you can pull it from there and paste it into your browser, and that should give you the full transcript in a separate window. Um, if you've joined by computer, the presentation should be in side-by-side -side mode. Your, sli your, si your slides are on the left and the panelists are on the right in gallery view. You can change the size of your side-by-side -side view by hovering between the two screens and moving the gray bar to adjust to your desired size. If you've joined by mobile device or phone, your view may be slightly different and you may have to scroll between views to get to your desired one. Um, this is a disclaimer that HLA does not endorse any product or feature in this webinar. HLA is providing an educational opportunity to learn about new products and opportunities and how they could benefit people with hearing loss. As I mentioned today, our presenter is Colleen Kinsella, and I will now turn over the presentation to her. Colleen? Okay. Is everyone seeing my screen okay? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much for that introduction, Melissa. I'm so excited to be here today. As Melissa stated, my name is Colleen Kinsella and I am an engagement manager with Cochlear Americas. I'm joined today by my colleague, Rachel Harrison. Rachel will be monitoring the Q&A feature on Zoom and will be answering any of your questions about the presentation today in that chat. If you have a question at any point during the presentation, please feel free to write it in the Q&A feature and Rachel will answer you. We're going to start by examining why you're here today. We know that almost one in every three people over the age of 65 are affected by hearing loss. Worldwide, that's almost 48 million people. We share this statistic so you know that you are not alone. We're going to discuss the different degrees of hearing loss first. You have likely heard some of these words during an audiology appointment or an appointment with your surgeon, but we're going to go over each of them a little bit more in depth. So with mild hearing loss, you may hear conversations, but soft sounds may be harder to hear, like whispers or people who talk very softly. You may also miss the ends of some words, like maybe the S in shoes or the SH in fish. This can make it really difficult to distinguish plurals, and it can also make it really difficult to understand the endings of certain words. With moderate hearing loss, you might be able to hear a person talking at a normal conversational level, but you have difficulty distinguishing what words they're saying. You may hear the vowels, but have trouble hearing some consonants. This can make understanding sentences really difficult because words can sound muffled. With severe hearing loss, you may hear some of what a person is saying at a normal level, or you may hear nothing that someone is saying at a normal conversational level. You might only hear really loud sounds like a car horn passing by you 
or a loud plane flying overhead. These sounds may not be startling to you in the same way that they're startling to a person who has normal hearing. With profound hearing loss, you don't really hear conversations. You can only hear very loud sounds. Sometimes you may only feel vibrations of these loud sounds. You also might rely very heavily on lip reading. I'm gonna show you this visual so you can get a sense of where speech sounds are in relation to the degrees of hearing loss. As you can see, speech sounds fall in this yellow area right here. We call this the speech banana. If your hearing loss is greater than moderately severe right here, or about 60 decibels, you are likely not hearing most of the sounds that distinguish speech from environmental sounds. The left side of the graph right here shows decibel level. This measures volume. The top of the graph up here shows Hertz. This measures pitch or frequency. The lower down you go on the graph, the louder sounds are. As you can see here, the plane is about 115 decibels. As you go to the right of the graph, the higher sounds are. You can think of this like a piano. The low pitch sounds are to the left and the higher pitch sounds are to the right. Along with degrees of hearing loss, we also have different types of hearing loss. Today, we're going to focus on one of the types of hearing loss, which is sensory neural hearing loss. Sensory neural hearing loss occurs when the cochlea is damaged. This type of hearing loss is unique in that sounds not only sound softer or more muffled, but they're also more difficult to understand. We see that this is especially true in an environment with a lot of background noise. Some common causes of sensory neural hearing loss include congenital hearing loss, aging, exposure to loud sounds, head trauma, genetics, Meniere's disease, or adverse reaction to medication. There are other causes to sensory neural hearing loss, but these are the most common that we see. Treatment options for sensory neural hearing loss include hearing aids and cochlear implants, also hybrid hearing solutions, which are a cochlear implant and a hearing aid combined into one device. So we're gonna discover a little bit more about some of these hearing loss solutions right now. Before we discuss these solutions in depth, I want to pause for a moment so everyone can reflect on these questions. I'll give you all a moment to read them. If you answered yes to any of these questions, an implantable hearing solution may be right for you. I want to discuss the different types of hearing with you to give you some context to what we mean when we refer to binaural, bimodal, and bilateral hearing. Binaural hearing means hearing with two ears. Hearing with both ears simultaneously gives better understanding to noise stimuli, especially with background noise. This can also help with localization. Localization means understanding which direction a noise is coming from in the environment. Bimodal hearing means that someone is using an implantable hearing solution plus a hearing aid in their other ear. This solution is most effective if the user has some hearing in the ear that is using the hearing aid. Cochlear implants will work with hearing aids as the brain interprets the sounds coming from both the hearing aid and the cochlear implant. At Cochlear, we partner with Resound to offer bimodal hearing and the option to stream sound from a device such as a smartphone at the same time. Bilateral hearing means that someone has two implantable hearing devices. It's important to note that the ability to hear with both ears will help with dimensional hearing, which makes sound more natural. Hearing with both ears help the helps the brain receive enough stimulation to understand conversations and speech. As I mentioned, one hearing loss solution is cochlear implants. Cochlear implants can help people with moderate to profound hearing loss. As you can see in this audiogram, 
if the results of a hearing test land in this area shaded in yellow, an audiologist would typically consider further testing for a cochlear implant. The cochlear implant consists of two parts, an internal implant and an external processor. Let's explore these a little bit more in depth. So we're gonna talk about the nucleus implant system. The nucleus implant system contains two components, the external sound processor and the internal implant. The external processor is what you can see. It attaches to the head via a magnet and you can choose which sound processor you prefer, the Nucleus 8 or the Canso 2. The Nucleus 8 is our newest sound processor and just got released this month. We're gonna discuss this a little bit more later. The internal implant is what is surgically implanted. The surgeon will cut a small incision behind your ear, place the magnet underneath the skin on your head, and then thread the electrode, which is this very small curly piece, into the cochlea. The electrodes on the implant are designed to bypass the damaged hair cells in your inner ear and stimulate the hearing nerve directly. This gives the ability to hear the full spectrum of sound digitally and provides a richer hearing experience. We do have different electrode options to match each person's individual needs. Your surgeon will recommend which type of implant you will receive based on your factors and certain preferences. The external processor and internal implant work together to help you process sound. We're going to watch a short video that explains this a little bit more in depth. The nucleus cochlear implant system is designed to mimic the functions of the human ear. Sound travels to your ear and the sound processor, which sits behind the ear. The microphones on the sound processor pick up sounds and the processor converts them into digital information. This information is transferred through the coil to the implant just under the skin. The implant sends digital sound signals down the electrode into the cochlea. The hearing nerve fibers in the cochlea pick up the signals and send them to the brain, which is translated as the sound you hear. Unlike a hearing aid that simply amplifies sound, cochlear implants send sound directly to the hearing nerve and on to the brain. The Nucleus 8 sound processor is our newest processor. It is what we call a behind the ear solution, meaning that there is a piece that goes behind the ear, as you can see in this picture right here, and a round magnet that attaches to the internal implant site. The Canso 2 is our off the ear solution, meaning that there are no pieces behind your ear. As you can see in this picture, it attaches to the magnet site without the need for anything to go behind the ear at all. Since the Nucleus 8 is brand new, I want to spend a couple minutes going over some of the features of this processor. The N8 is the smallest and lightest behind the ear sound processor on the market, and it is designed for comfort. The new design is ergonomic and fits behind the ear comfortably and discreetly. The N8 is also very smart. It has some really cool features that can automate noise reduction technology called forward focus. This processor is also Bluetooth LE compatible, which makes connecting to a smartphone very easy. Furthermore, the N8 is the first cochlear implant sound processor that is ready for Bluetooth LE audio called AuraCast. This technology will allow our recipients to engage with audio in public spaces, such as airports or movie theaters, automatically. We're going to watch a short video about N8 as well.
So you may be wondering what comes next? What do I need to do to determine if I am a cochlear implant candidate? Let's discuss some of the steps you will take to determine candidacy. The first thing what you will do is get your hearing evaluated by an audiologist. Every clinic has a different protocol, but typically this will consist of you going through some hearing tests with your audiologist. This is a different testing than a typical hearing test. They will do a series of different assessments to determine what you are hearing. After that, if you are determined to be a candidate, the audiologist will refer you to a surgeon. The surgeon will then determine if you are a medical candidate for a cochlear implant, meaning they will do some imaging scans to look at your anatomy and also consult your physician to see if you are physically well enough to undergo surgery. Once you are determined to be an audiologic and medical candidate, the surgeon's office will, schedule, will call you to schedule your surgery. This brings us to surgery day. The implant procedure is typically outpatient. Most people go home the same day. It is performed under general anesthesia and typically takes about an hour and a half to two hours. The surgeon will cut a small incision behind your ear, and within a few days, most people have returned to their daily activities. We always like to mention that this has been a treatment option for 40 years, and it is very safe. After surgery, you'll wait a few weeks to get your implant turned on. Each audiology center is different, but most centers will have you come back around the three week post-op mark. When they turn your implant on, you will be hearing out of your new cochlear implant for the first time. This brings us to after your activation. After activation, you will begin working on what we call oral or auditory rehab. This will help you get the most benefit out of your cochlear implant experience. I always like to equate a cochlear implant rehabilitation experience to knee replacement surgery. When someone gets their knee replaced, they don't hop out of bed and run a marathon the next day. They must do their exercises, go to physical therapy, and work slowly each day to rehabilitate their knee to get them back to where they were before their surgery. A cochlear implant is similar. You must retrain your brain to hear the sounds that you have been missing. This involves wearing the processor daily during all waking hours, doing some listening exercises, and consistently going back to your audiologist for follow-up appointments so they can update your programming. Now that we have talked about how and when to get a cochlear implant, let's discuss what comes after. I love to go over outcomes because I think it shows how great life can be living with a cochlear implant. When compared to using hearing aids, Adults with cochlear implants felt that their ability to understand the TV improved by five times. Their ability to understand sentences improved by seven times. And their ability to hear on the phone improved by 11 times. These numbers show that life can be richer and fuller with a cochlear implant. Here's some more information that shows quality of life improvement. Cochlear implants help improve speech understanding, hearing and noise, we know this is a big one, quality of life, and employment opportunities. It is important to talk with your audiologist about your hearing performance expectations. They can help you determine what exactly you would like to get out of using a cochlear implant, and they can help you achieve these goals. On one final note, I want to say that you don't have to wait until you lose all of your hearing to benefit from a cochlear implant. It is so important that you discuss which hearing technology may be best for you with your medical team. Cochlear implants take commitment, patience, and support. But as we saw from some of the information we just discussed, it is well worth the journey. Thank you so much for your time. I'm posting my and Rachel's contact information in this slide if anyone would like to reach out with, to us. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Colleen. Um, if we have any Q and A, folks can put those into the into the Q and A. Well, looks like we do have one. Um, I'm a swimmer. What happens with an implant in water? Yeah, that's a great question. So I can go ahead and address that. So our implants are rated with an IP rating of 68. However, that means that they are dust and water resistant, not dust and water proof. So if you're going to be like outside and you get caught in the rain, for instance, your processor will be okay. If you're going to be swimming underwater for a prolonged period of time, we do recommend using our aqua kit um, it's just a little sleeve that goes over the cochlear implant and it makes it completely waterproof. At cochlear, you get four free accessories and the aqua kit is one of the accessories that you can choose for free. Great. Um, someone else asked, what about music? How much will the cochlear implant improve that? Yeah, we get that question a lot. So, and that's a great question to ask maybe one of our recipients. Because I am not a recipient, I can't answer that directly. I can only go from what I know from our recipients. Many of them say that music sounds just as rich and full as it did before they were implanted. Some say that it sounds different. It's really dependent on your own experience. But if you would like to reach out to me, I'd be more than happy to connect you with one of our recipients so they can answer that question. Okay. We've got a couple of other questions about um, music. Um, one is, I'm a musician. How will the cochlear implant affect the way I hear that music that I play on my piano or that I sing? Um, would that be kind of the same answer that you would connect them with, with someone directly sure. to talk to it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then someone else asked, technology is always improving. How would the improvements be accommodated? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm really glad someone asked that. So at Cochlear, we're always innovating. And while we're doing that, we also want to ensure that we are taking care of our past recipients. So all of our electrodes, which is the internal part, has something called backwards compatibility. So that essentially means that someone who was implanted 20, 30 years ago, they can use our new technology effectively. So we want to make sure that everything that we make now and in the future will be able to be used by everybody that has our internal technology too. That's something that we've really committed to. Um, and so all of our processors have backwards compatibility. Okay, great. Um, someone else said, and this kind of ties into that, I have N6 and are, they're looking forward to the upgrade. Can the processor be controlled by buttons or do you have to have a cell phone available? What if the phone runs out of batteries? Sure, so I actually have the N8 right here, so I can go ahead and show you. There is still a button on the top, as you can see. So you can switch programs with this button. Um, we also, you, you can use the app. If your phone runs out of battery, um, we do have a remote as well. So there's a few different options. Great. Um, someone else said, I have been deaf most of my life. I was wondering if an implant will help improve my speech. Yeah, that's a good question to probably ask your audiologist too, just because I don't know a lot of your history. Um, certainly being able to have exposure to all speech sounds will allow you to um, perhaps maybe rehabilitate some of that speech that you may have lost or maybe didn't have to begin with. Great. Um, someone else asked to please elaborate on the kind of exercises one needs to do after the implement is placed. Sure. So it's different for everyone. At Cochlear, we actually have an app called Copilot um, that you can use. And it essentially walks you through different stages of listening exercises. So first and foremost, we tell everyone the best thing that you can do is just wear your processor during all waking hours. So as soon as you wake up, put it on. When you're ready to go to bed, take it off. That's the best thing that you can do for yourself. However, we also recommend doing some of these listening exercises, such as listening to the baseball game on the radio and watching it simultaneously on TV. So you're getting this auditory input and you're also getting a different visual stimulus. And so your brain is starting to put together when you hear um, some baseball player's name and you see him on TV and you're reading the back of his jersey, you're putting together that that's what the announcer is saying. 
You can also do things like having conversations with a conversational partner and having them cover their mouth and you try to distinguish certain words that they're saying, you repeat those words back to them. Um, and after your surgery and after you are activated, we can provide all of these resources for you as well as your audiologist. I do wanna to mention too, we also at Cochlear have something called a recipient solutions manager. And this is someone that helps you after your activation. They help you decide how to use all of your accessories, how to use your processors, and they can also help you with that rehabilitation piece as well. Great. Um, someone else asked about what about hearing at night when the implant is off? Yeah, so that's totally dependent on how much residual hearing you have. And that's a really good question to ask your surgeon or your audiologist, um, because that is dependent on, um, you know, your hearing history. Okay, great. Um, does and um, does the N8 processor have a telecoil? Um, so it no, um, it does not. However, with Auracast, it's a whole different type of technology, and I'm happy to answer that question a little bit more in depth if you want to shoot me a message on email, um, and I can provide some information. Just because Auracast is a little bit complicated to explain in a short time, so I want to make sure okay. I answer that completely. Right. Um, someone else said, what about listening to a hearing loop? And then someone said, please explain, explain again how you can access Bluetooth in public settings automatically. So I think folks are interested in kind of how you listen out in public. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool technology and it's also fairly new. Um, so we're all kind of learning together, but it is kind of the next generation of technology and Bluetooth that's gonna come out. Um, so we really wanted to be ahead of the game with this processor and ensure that people who get this processor can access it as soon as it's released. Okay. Um, what is the life expectancy of the device? Yeah, so that's dependent on quite a few different factors. Um, typically, we, we say that devices will last as long as you take care of them. It's just like any piece of technology. Um, typically warranties last about five years. That depends on your insurance though, too. So it, it depends on a couple of different things, okay. but people okay. are still using, I, I think there was someone that said they're using an N6. Um, so you can use the devices as long as you take care of them. Great. Um, someone else asked if both ears are considered to be cochlear implant eligible, would, could the implants be installed at different times? The thought of not being able to hear at all for three to four weeks would be mentally challenging. Absolutely. And typically you do one side at a time. Um, that's what most audiologists and surgeons will recommend. And that's typically what insurance will recommend as well. Um, so most of the time we see that people do one at a time, but that is also a great question to ask your audiologist. Great. Um, well, we're about at the end here. Um, thank you so much, Colleen, and thank you for 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 being here. Um, for more resources and things, please visit our um, our uh, recorded webinars. And this this webinar will be up there um, in the, you know the next couple of weeks. Um, that's hearingloss.org. Um, and thank you um, to our captioner, Lisa. And um, if you have any questions, um, Colleen shared her emails and you can reach out to her directly. And we'll also see about, you know, putting, if there were any questions that we didn't get answered, getting those up with the, with the recorded webinar. So thank you so much. Um, we appreciate everyone participating today. Thank you so much. I really appreciated being here. All right.